shares of Ameren soaring today at more than 200% after a study showed its fish oil derived drug reduced the risk of serious heart problems by 25%. Meg Terrell joins us now with the exciting details, Meg. Hey, Mel. Well, it is a huge result for both the fortunes of Irish biotech company Ameren, as well as for medicine and options for treating heart disease, the number one cause of death both in the U.S. and worldwide. Now, Ameren's drug Vasipa is already approved to lower triglycerides, a type of fat found in the blood. Sales of the medicine last year were about $180 million, modest when compared to blockbuster heart drugs like Lipitor, which is a statin. Now, that may all be about to change. New clinical trial results today show that Vasipa reduced the risk of a major cardiac event, like a heart attack or stroke by 25% when given on top of statins. Now that's a lot more than Wall Street was expecting, which of course is reflected in Ameren's stock price today. The drug is derived from fish oil, but don't call it a fish oil pill. The company emphasizes it's a highly purified form of the omega-3 acid known as EPA. Now some doctors still have questions about the results, which will be presented more fully at the American Heart Association Conference in November, but analyst John Boris of SunTrust said he now sees a market for the drug of more than 30 million patients. Wow, that's a lot of patients. Uh, stay right here, Meg. Will this news be a game changer for patients with heart disease? Let's bring in John Thera, the president and CEO of Amarin. John, thanks so much for, for joining us on an exciting day like this uh, for your company. Very happy to be here, and I hope these results help us help millions of patients. I don't want to jump too far ahead here, but you know, when you take a look at preventing um, risks, uh, heart risks, you know, your results, 25% reduction, that compares to one of the most exciting class of statins, PCSK9s, which reduce events by 15%. So what can you, I mean, how, how should we think about these results in the context of the landscape? Yeah, good question. Uh, you know, of course, cardiovascular disease is a huge burden. It's the number one cause of death in the United States, also the most expensive area of health care. People have been uh, working to lower cholesterol for years, but we know that lowering cholesterol, whether it be through statins or PCSK9s, lowers cardiovascular risk by about 25 to 35 percent. Now, 25 to 35 percent is terrific, but that still, of course, leaves 60 to 75 percent residual risk. Where our drug is focused is addressing that 65 to 75 percent residual risk. So to be able to show 25 percent risk reduction on top of that cholesterol management is both new and we believe very important uh, in true terms of an opportunity for improved health care. So, so just about, I'm, just, I'm sure there are a lot of people looking at this interview very intently thinking I want to reduce my risk. We should really think about it not just in terms of that 25% reduction, but the 25% on top of whatever reduction from statins or PCSK9 inhibitors. That's correct. We're certainly not trying to replace statins or PCSK9s. But you they're, can have they're, a they're greater terrific. rate of prevention. Exactly. This is addressing a whole different uh, range of risks. One of the interesting things about PCSK9s that you just brought up, this other class of cholesterol drugs from Regeneron and Amgen, is they cost $14,000 a year. And there have been some discounts given on them, but your drug is priced at $2,400 a year. Do you plan to increase the price because of these new results? You know, so those drugs you refer to, terrific drugs, uh, what they're trying to do is address the cholesterol where statins aren't sufficient by uh, which is a, a bit of a narrower, important, but narrower market. We think we're much more analogous to statins, where we're coming in and we're the first in a very new market, and we're trying to have our drug uh, be used by millions of patients, which means it should be affordable. So our drug is today priced at a level that's comparable to where statins were priced before they went generic. Now, this is a drug that's already approved by the FDA, right? It was approved by... It's approved today for use in yeah, patients with very high triglycerides, which is the risk of pancreatitis. So this move into cardiovascular is new for us and right. uh, important, obviously. Um, and Meg mentioned that your sales last year were a modest $180 million. Are you prepared to ramp up production? Do you have the cash? According to your latest statements, I mean, 2018 estimated cash is $116 million. What can you tell us about ramping up production? Yeah, so we've got an excellent group of people who've been working on this. Our strategy from the beginning has been that doctors want to see outcomes data. They want to not just see that you lower biomarkers, but they want to see that you lower uh, heart attacks and deaths and strokes. And we now have that. We started in the marketplace with an niche, important niche market of risks of pancreatitis, but always knew that the end goal was to have outcomes data. And now with that, we are 
building up our supply. We've got five years of successful uh, you know, commercial production, so we've shown that we can do it. Uh, we've got good relationships with physicians. We already have broad managed care coverage. You know, most patients can get the drug today for its current indication for about $3 per month with uh, you know, commercial insurance. So I think we have a lot of the pieces in place, and we are, as you say, expanding our sales force significantly here to try to educate physicians on this, well, this new opportunity. Well, you have to do a capital raise in order to do that, though, or do you have enough cash on hand? Yeah, you know, so we ended our last quarter with over $100 million in, in cash. The clinical trial itself has been very expensive. It's been about 60 to 50 to 60 million dollars you know, per year. That cost will be going down now that the trial is over. There's still work to be done, of course, in getting the results published. Uh, we're very pleased that we were uh, asked to be a late breaker at the upcoming American Heart Association show where the data will be presented in more detail. But as those research and development costs go down, they won't go away because there's still a, we, we still believe in, in research and development. But we're going to use a lot of that savings to plow it into uh, education and research and uh, sales and marketing. Now we gotta go, I know, but really quickly, you sat on the conference call today, you're not for sale. How do you avoid getting bought? You know, so we, we do work for our shareholders, uh, you know, but you know, there are a lot of companies that uh, you know, are small and, and don't have infrastructure in place. We already have managed care uh, coverage, we already have proven supply, we already have strong relationships. We need expanded you know, sales and marketing. Uh, we're gonna focus on that which we can control, which is growing ourselves, uh, and we'll let everything else play itself out. John, thanks so much for joining us. It's been John my pleasure. Pierro, the CEO of Amarin and our own Meg Terrell. Thanks.